I mean, I hate myself for asking, but what does this card mean? That there is danger, not merely confusion. There's a girl, and burial, and death. Listen, so far we've had our wallets stolen thanks to you, have been warned to get out of town, found two voodoo dolls hanging in our room, and been told our lives are in danger. Now, either you tell us everything you know, or I'm going to pick up that phone, call the police, and we'll discuss it downtown in a detention cell. All right. I have a sister, Josette. She came to New Orleans five months ago, looking for excitement. Go on. She's also fascinated by black magic. She wrote and told me about a man who had completely captivated her, a Dr. Dove. What would your sister be doing in an abandoned warehouse on the waterfront? I don't know. Let's check it out. Close. Well, she rather looked upon me as a father figure. She was obsessed by this idea of voodoo. So I vowed to myself I would find her. That's why I wanted to talk to Marie Claire tonight. Why tonight? Because I think I have found her sister. All right, both of you. Hold it right there. I deal with ammos and rap sheets and informers and busts in the street. I don't believe anything I can't understand. But I've seen a lot of strange things. And I've looked down at a few dead people with bones and dolls in their hands. Get out of it. To again. Yeah, come on. I suppose he's uh, lying up there in a coffin? Yeah, how'd you know? I think we're supposed to be next. Where'd you get these? We found them hanging in our room earlier. Hang out of these things, will you? Let's go. Why didn't you tell me about this before? We had other things on our mind, like being locked up. Come on. <laughs> Where? It's right there, propped against the bed. Where? It was here 10 minutes ago. In a coffin? Yeah, it was right there. Once more, fellas. One more time, and you'll be guests of the city of New Orleans for six months. Got it? I don't care whose sons you are. It's no use. There's no way out of here. they hurt? No. Who bandaged them for you? The old one, the fortune teller. Did your vision go all at once or slowly? No, I, I saw a red haze and an hour after that, they really began to hurt. Two hours later, I could hardly see anything. Then they caught me and they found out that I knew. And by the time they brought me here, I couldn't see anything. We'll get you to a doctor just as soon as, as we get out of here. No doctor can fight voodoo. We're never going to get out of here. There's no one even looking for us. I was with two guys the night Dub got me. They knew you were missing, and now they know I'm missing. They can't help us. No one can. Dr. Dove is too powerful.
Ghost Driver? Yes. I want you to follow it. Yes, ma'am. There's got to be something in this room that can help us, some clue. Thatcher must have gotten too close to something. They had to get rid of him. And whoever killed Thatcher must be holding Marie Claire and Josette. If they're still alive. Frank. What? What is it? It's Thatcher's notebook. A bunch of notes on New Orleans. Here, wait a minute. Let me see. Hey, listen to this. It's very rare that such a privilege is afforded any human being. And so I must lay aside whatever personal fears I have for the good of mankind and more revenge it tomorrow. Guy had quite a mission, didn't he? What's that? Minuit au quel fall du paradis. Midnight at the crossroads of paradise.
Si you you ka Tamba Tamba Si you you ka Tamba Si you you ka Tamba Si yama Papa Legba Papa Legba Open wide the gates Papa Legba Where are the children Papa What is it? Smelling something. Something really strong. Some kind of incense. No, no, no. It's stronger than that. Uh, chloroform. Chloroform. It was chloroform. Oh. That's that's why we passed out. It wasn't, it wasn't the pins and the dolls. I don't like the kind of games these people are playing with us. But what are we going to do? I don't think we have much choice. Great tune, guys. Love your work. You guys know the disco version? Everywhere, and that's the only way out. Come on. Wait. Did you work for Dr. Duff, too? Yes, but it was a cover. I'm an investigator. I've been following some stolen hospital equipment. My client has reason to believe that Dr. Dove may be the one who stole it. Did you see a red haze before your eyes began to hurt, Josette? Yes, and then I felt this terrible pain. It's all coming together. How did you find us? I didn't have much choice. I followed Dr. Dove last night, and I guess they saw me. The next thing I knew, you two were trying to wake me up. We've got to get Josette to a hospital. Come on. Come on, Josette. No. Wait, wait. It's OK. It's OK. She's going to go down the stairs. OK. Now you're sure you saw the body? Twice. In a hotel room, and then again in the bayou after they moved it. OK, let's go. How are you? You guys know each other? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Dr. Orrin Thatcher from London University. I'm over here to see your Mardi Gras. Uh, uh, this, this, got, uh, this, there's got to be a logical explanation for this. Sundown. Sundown? Sundown. Sundown. I want you out of my town by sundown tonight. You got it? Yeah, I got it. I mean it, fellas. Personally, I like the part where you both woke up in the coffins. Great. You're supposed to be dead. Dead? Why not should I be dead? By the way, I must talk to you tonight, both of you. Very important. Now I must leave you. My mind is going. 
had that feeling for some time. glass with. Josette first. Help her, Marie Claire. And hurry. I don't think we should do this. She can't see. No, no, we have to. I want to. Just show me where to step. Okay, Josette, it's a big one. Step up. All right. good at, isn't it? Tricks, illusions, magic, creating fear and superstition. Must be quite a kick for someone who's really so scientific. I practice the science of the ancient arts, the dark forces of the mind. That's not what you got your degree at London University for. Physics and laser research, wasn't it? I understand you were a student with tremendous potential. I guess they just didn't realize what you were going to do with that potential. And what was I going to do with it? You'd make a lot of money out of it, I'd say. Science can be a powerful weapon in the hands of a mercenary, sold to the highest bidder. Who are you? My name's Nancy Drew. You don't know me, but I know you. I picked up your trail while you were in Haiti, where you first met Dr. Dove, and realized how you could use his theatricality. I should have known about you. I could feel something. And I'm not alone in this. The smartest thing you could do is to let us all go before... Tonight it is finished. Dr. Dove will retire into the obscurity of a mist-shrouded swamp. Some will say he's returned to Haiti. Others will think he's changed himself into a snake and has wound himself around a tree and is hiding in some dismal place, waiting to emerge at Mardi Gras time. And where will you be? Oh, probably the Riviera. Possibly can. But you will be here, my dear. All three of you. I already had your graves dug. No problem. No problem at all. And tonight, we hold the ceremony of your sacrifice. For real. up, we were in our own coffins. They even had our names on them. I like the personal touch, don't you? Extraordinary. Quite extraordinary. And I appear to you in a death-like state? Completely. You know, it was all very theatrical. You have no idea what happened to you? Not at all. I was standing in the cemetery with you while you were opening the coffin, and I suddenly began to feel faint. Uh, my head began to spin. And I suppose I blacked out. 
Next thing I knew, I was in my hotel room. Don't know how I got there. Uh, what did you find in that coffin? It was empty. No Josette. I must be getting close to Dr. Dove's secrets. He's using all of his power to... Blind us with an incredible snow job. You know, I think this is all a put on. I think, I think he's trying to scare us out of town. I think he's using this voodoo thing to put up a smoke screen to block out whatever it is he's really doing in New Orleans. And what is that? We don't know. But Josette must have found out. That's why she disappeared. And Marie Claire. She must have gotten in the way, as did you, as did we. I think we've had our last warning. I think he's tired of playing games. I think next time our deaths are going to be real. I thought that line would have grabbed you a little bit. The good doctor. Part of the ambassador's entourage? Yes, that's Mavotu, his right hand man, so to speak. They've been to the club before. The ambassador's fascinated with Dr. Dove. Didn't one of his entourage have a stroke here? Uh, suddenly passed out? Yes, he did. They had to be sitting here at the time. And I happened to overhear the ambassador say he had a heart condition. I wonder. They certainly seem to be on more personal terms with Dr. Dove than those of just an ardent fan. conversations about. Why don't we just ask him? Well, I'm sick of being pushed around. I want to be the pusher for a change. And there's a straightforward kick in the teeth attitude about you I've always admired. Well, thank you. You know, it takes a few nights of abuse to get in this kind of a mood, but I'm getting there pretty quick. You two had better be careful. As you said, the next time they may not just want to scare you off. We'll be careful, but so should you. I know you want to find Josette, but leave that to us. We'll contact you at our hotel if we find anything. Are you going to be leaving New Orleans after the Mardi Gras? Well, I still have a lot of research to do. Dove may have been merely trying to frighten us. But make no mistake, the man is still a high priest and does understand the secrets of the dark forces. We don't want to find you in another coffin. Old Etonians are not easily dissuaded from their goals. We meet every year in March the 1st at Simpsons in the Strand. I intend to be there this year. Good luck. Absolutely out of the question. The ambassador has not been out of his suite in two days. He is not seeing anyone. Look, tell him we're Fenton Hardy's sons. Our father is a detective. He did some work with a man named Nagutu in Kenya. I believe he and the ambassador are very close friends. Tell him it's a matter of life and death. Possibly his own. <clears throat> uh, Fenton Hardy's sons. Well, I hope Nancy enjoyed, enjoyed Mardi Gras. Yes. <clears throat> uh, the ambassador will see you. Suite 207, second floor. Thank you. Thank you. You got a swell place here. Swell place. We're standing across the street. It's lovely. Love your suit. Bless. Love the fixtures. It's no use, Nancy. You heard what that man said. It's only a matter of time. That's right. Time to plan. Time to work out a strategy that's going to get us out of here. Actually, I think it was very generous of Dr. Dove to give us that time, don't you? What are you going to do? We have to have some kind of weapon besides our wits and good looks. If you don't have one, make one.
Hardy boys. How do you do? I've heard some great things about your father from my friend Nokotu in Kenya. And also about his sons. I'm honored by your visit. Thank you. Please, sit down. Hold all my calls except the one I'm expecting from Washington. And please, bring me a glass of water. The clerk told me this is a matter of life and death. You certainly know how to be intriguing enough to gain an audience. Thank you. Ambassador, why are you here in this country? I have many goals. I'm here seeking aid for my people. And what would happen to those goals if something happens to you? And it's something going to happen to me? Something may have already happened to you. What do you mean? The other night you were in the Club Dumbala. Oh, yes. There's a very remarkable man performing there, Dr. Dove. I have never seen anything like him before. No, neither have we. While you were in there, something happened. One of your entourage collapsed. Yes. Very distressing. He's still in the hospital. They think it may be some kind of a stroke. Mr. Ambassador, we think that stroke may have been meant for you. <gasps> How does one induce a stroke? You're not talking surely about a needle piercing the head of a doll. There have been some very strange things that have taken place since we came to New Orleans. Some of them may have something to do with voodoo. Then that is what you are saying. What we're saying is that your life may be in real danger. Send in Mobutu as soon as he arrives. Yes, sir, Mr. Ambassador. Ambassador, are you all right? Yes. Yes, quite all right. Some sort of a virus. I've been forced to conduct all my business in the suite. Have you been getting worse? Not really. Tomorrow I attend a nation's meeting and fly home. The French food in this town may be just a little too rich for my blood. You were saying about voodoo. The man that you were speaking of, Mobutu, we saw him last night talking with Dr. Dove at the Club Dumbala. Dr. Dove is the man who's been trying to frighten us. He can be frightening. Mobutu was even more taken up with this Dr. Dove than I was. I wanted to see if he was performing there tonight, since this is our last evening in New Orleans. I will not be able to attend. I appreciate your words of warning, but they've been misguided. The atmosphere of a Mardi Gras can be heady. One can easily be caught up in its, dare I say it, spell. But thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. What do you think, Frank? I think he's dying. Looks like sundown outside. Always does this time of day. Just be sure our two visitors are on their way to the airport, OK? That will be a pleasure.
There's got to be something in here, something in this room. The previous tenant is found in the swamp. People come and go in and out of here at will. I know, but what is it? What if something's happening in this room? What do you mean? The Hotel Jean Lafitte's right across the street, you know that? Yes, I know. Do you also know that the Ambassador is staying right across the street? Yes, go on. No, you don't understand. The Ambassador is staying right across the street. I mean, his window is directly across from our window. All right, what's the connection? I know a way to find out. How do I do it? And when this door is open, it's going to activate that camera. And whoever's been coming in here, we're going to get a picture of. If someone's been coming in here. And tomorrow, we'll come back, we'll develop the pictures, we're going to find out what they've been doing. You know, for a younger brother, you've got some style. You're all hard. Well, we all set? Yeah, yeah, I think so. What are you doing? I think it's time we called in some reinforcements. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but the sun has gone down. And when the sun goes down, it is sundown. And the sun has gone down, and we are still here. And they are going to be after us. The police weren't the kind of reinforcements I was thinking of. Come on. Come on. I am sorry, gentlemen. I have not seen Miss Drew since yesterday. Amy, she didn't come back to the hotel last night? But this is New Orleans, the Mardi Gras. It can be a most hospitable city. We'd like to see her room. <sighs> Monsieur, I cannot... Oh, come on, she's a good friend of ours. Her life may be in danger. Now, are you going to let us in the room, or do we call the police and have them let us in? What are you doing? Where's the girl? Where's Nancy? It's too late. I warned you. I warned her, too. It's too late. <laughs> too late. I'm calling the police. Now what do we do? Let's get out of here before Martinelle arrives. Frank, you know, this doesn't have to mean anything. I mean, just because Marie Claire found it in Josette's room. When you're in a maze and you've only got one avenue open to you, you take it. Don't you? It's the only lead we've got. Unless, of course, you want to go back to the room and spoil a little surprise. Or you want to wander the streets and wait for Martinelle to pick us up. OK, OK, you're right. All right. Sometimes you make good sense. Let's go. something to pry it open. Get your Zet and be ready to run. Josette, 
just stick with me. Everything's gonna be all right. Okay. We're gonna go when I say, and we're not gonna stop for anything. Okay. Now just, just keep holding my hand. Better if it was Dr. Dove. He likes to pay those little voodoo tricks. I play for real. I get back into that room and wait for Dr. Dove. One by one, if we have to. Now, you can't get out of here. I happen to know that all the doors are locked. We'll find you. You might as well give yourselves up to us. Stay here. I'm going after Thatcher. Hope you like this, Doctor. It's my best trick. Haggerty, patch me through to Lieutenant Martinell, please. Martinell. 
Marty, I just saw Joe Hardy going to the Club Dumballa. On my way. Right. Go home, dead man, go home. Not until we've had a little talk. Unless you're afraid to face me. That's a good trick. Dr. Dove would be very proud of you. Dr. Dove is my protege. That, uh, that Englishman who died of a voodoo curse. You put that curse on him in Haiti. You're the high priest. Of course. But that's not why he died. Some say he contracted pneumonia. But who can say? Never underestimate the forces of the unknown. We know what's going on here. We know you're trying to kill the African ambassador. Not kill him. Just make him very sick. Red light. Blinding. Laser beam. That's right. That's, that's the equipment Nancy's been searching for. It's positioned right there, over the idol. But the ambassador was wearing copper-tinted lenses. The beam bounced off his and hit one of his aides, causing his stroke. Unfortunate. And after that, you decided to go to the hotel room across the way. Our hotel room. But why? Why try and make him sick? So that he could go home. And then Mobutu, as his second in command, could take over the nation's conference. You're very clever. I see that you've brought your friends. Come to hear my confession. It'll do you no good. You forget who you deal with. I'm Orrin Thatcher, the high priest. You're also under arrest. In what form would you like me to be? Get around back. Guess I owe you an apology, son. Uh, Dr. Dove and one of his hatchet men is down in the harbor in one of those warehouses where they keep the Mardi Gras floats. My brother could use some help. He's got it. He's disappeared. I mean, he couldn't have gotten around back, and one of my men was there. He just... he vanished. Has he? Well, that, that's part of Dr. Dove.